For those of you who can't see me due to the uh, the mannequin on stage, you're lucky for the first few minutes only because it'll be uh, it'll be off there shortly. The first thing I'd like to do is thank everybody for coming along this evening. Um, I'd also like to thank Dean for stepping in at short notice. As you know, the game this fixture changed only a few weeks ago. It, the third kit is going to be worn by town for the first time a week on Saturday. The lunchtime kickoff live on Sky. And the Wolverhampton Wanderers game, I think it's a 12.30 kickoff. And this kit that Dean's now going to unveil is a tribute to town's fallen hero. So, Come on, Dean, there's nothing like that. So it's camouflage, it's a tribute to town's fallen heroes throughout the years. Eight town players have lost their lives in action service. <laughs> Just a bit of news for you, those of you who follow town closely will know this. Uh, we've had a game this afternoon, the Professional Development League 2, which is supposed to be under 21s with some overage players. Town have fielded a team of all under 21s today. In fact, pretty much all season we've not fielded any overage players, which is a you know a great uh, a great thing for the club long term. Hopefully, um, Watford took the lead. It was down in somewhere near Watford. I don't think it was that Vicarage Road. Watford took the lead through a 25-year-old Colombian international. Notice I said under 21s. A Colombian international, Victor Ibarbo, um, but early second half, two goals. One from Reckill Pike and one from Sondre Tronstad, a 2 1 win for town down at now Premier League Watford, so that's a great win to go <laughs> So, we'll pick up on that. I'm just going to ask you a few questions to start with, Dean. The last time you were here, um, or it might have been the meeting before that, you said that the academy, it was time for it to deliver. That's a good win down there. One game doesn't make a summer. I watched a bit of the under 18s on Saturday. There was a young left back called Harry Clibben scored a couple of goals. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, young left back scored a couple of goals, and, uh, but it was a great 4-1 win against Ipswich Town. Um, a month on, what are your views about the uh, the academy, etc. now? Yeah, it's still the same actually. Um, we haven't brought anybody through really. I know Philly Billing got half a game against um, Chelsea and did pretty well. Um, we get the academy, as we sit here now, is it bringing people through? Um, well, that's it, it's where the benchmark you look at Leeds United down the road. They've got two or three players in their first eleven, um, some really good players, and we have them here. Um, you know, there's definitely pressure on the academy to reduce. They haven't got to now. Um, how do you benchmark it? Do you benchmark it by how many players can choose the first team? As simple as that. They just sit here now. They're not, but you know, um, now the chairman, so I take full responsibility. But um, as we sit here now. Um, well, there's definitely pressure on the academy to produce. They have to produce. Um, it might be this year, it might be next year. Um, and I think Chris is prepared to give them the chance, but they need to come up to the metal and see. So yeah, fingers crossed. How many people were down at Charlton? Not so many in here, just, uh, just a few hours. It's a long way to go on a Tuesday yes, night yeah. when you've not won a game all season, Dean, just after Cardiff on a Saturday. Yes, uh, we had to win that game. You were quite impressed with Philip Billing in the second half. I thought it was a really tough game, actually. I mean, he was did really well in the first half. 2-1 um, up, and Philip's got to come on and hold the fort or help um, uh, Dean White hold the fort. So for his first appearance, um, to actually come on and protect a 2-1 lead, when the pressure is definitely on, then that takes some that takes some guts and, and Philip didn't have a fantastic game, but he did he did mark and positional play very well. So for me, um, a great debut and you can all take confidence from that. So yeah, happy days. A question that's been asked a lot by uh, our good friend the Internet Warriors. How much of the Butterfield and or Smithies money is going to be made available to uh, to, to spend on players, whether that be January, next summer, or whenever? I think what people have got to be realistic about is when we buy Naki Wells, although it wasn't a Jacob kind of deal, uh, 1.3 million, nobody asked, where's the money going to come from for Naki? You know, this club trades, and they always said in the program that was that Alex Smith is money, and now we've got Jacob, so there's even more. Um, we've got to balance between transfers coming in and bridging trade losses. So we will always make sure that, and what we've got now, we've got a bit of a war chest, 
that if we feel the right players in the future do come for sale, um, then we'll, we'll take them. But at the moment we've got four, uh, four loan signings, we can't take any more loan signings on because we've got a keeper. The keeper got brought in because we had an injury to our keeper, um, but injury to um, um, Hudson, so obviously Ward came in. Excellent, I think he's played very well. Um, and we've got Carroll because Chris wanted to play more attacking um, football on the wings and play some power, especially from home. And we've got Hughes, so we are now, we can't really bring any more role players in. Um, in January, if the right players are available, then we'll strengthen the squad. That's how it works. So, yeah, there's always money available, there always has been money available. But at the same time, you can't expect to pay, buy, go out and buy a £3 million player, because that £3 million player simply, we can't afford their wages in our model. And, that, and that's, that's where we are. So, you know, like we do, um, you know, like I said before, you know, Dempsey and Jordi, the ruler came in because the academy's in producing. So those two players hopefully will be able to turn and make some money on in years to come if they do well. Jordi's doing excellent at, full, uh, at Wigan, really pleased with him, um, so that's great. Um, that's, that's how this club performs. So regarding cash available, there's always cash available. I'm not going to sit here and say there's one, two, three, four, five or six million available. It's if we need the players and they have the right value for this club, because I think we're getting a reputation now that, that we can trade well, then that's why. Summer recruit. This, I thought this was a good question. I'm going to go to the floor very shortly, guys. I'm, uh, I'm not hogging the, uh, the mic, hopefully. Um, why was our summer recruitment with regard to transfer fees paid restricted to players not considered ready for the first team? Was this a conscious decision, not being able to get the targets we wanted due to cost? Or players not wanting to come. I suppose it could be all of the above, but uh... it, it could be. A, it could, it could be if, if you're looking at Cal Dempsey, who I still believe will get his chance this year. Not to about it. He's a great player. Jordi's out on loan. You know, young players have been brought to this club because the academy hasn't produced. So we need to we, we, we need to trade. So hopefully they can stand for the future. And hopefully, you know, Jordi could be a five million pound striker. Days. That's how it works. What's That's Dean's view on the South Stand? They're the people that got a bit confused. They call themselves North Stand Loyal Dean and the South Stand now. But, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the organisers there, Ben Greaves, so he'll be very keen to know what your view on the South Stand is. I, I know the answer to this. I think um, we've had a difficult start to the season, or we had, and I think the South Stand has been a huge success, so I think that's something or one thing we have got right. Um, no two ways about it, it's made a huge difference. Um, I sit, um, you know what I sit? You stand these days, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just, just stand it. Um, it's really loud, you're definitely louder than the, than the away fans, um, and Bolton probably had the five, six hundred more than you guys um, in the first half. Um, and I think what's important is, You've got to get behind the team when we're not doing that well as much as when we're doing well because it really does egg them on. So in the first half against Bolton, um, we started off great, meant to go down, a little bit subdued. But that is when we've got to start making noise because I noticed um, um, earlier on in the season, um, was it against the uh, I mean QBR? You know, nil nil. The racket you made in there was absolutely incredible. It was it was absolutely superb, and it. It goes around the, around the ground and it actually gets other people involved. So for me, the South Stand um, being in there has been a huge, huge success. And it's one where, as long as we don't have trouble in there, I cannot see it not continuing. It, it's fantastic, yeah, really big difference. Uh, where are we with the James Vaughan situation? James Vaughan-D. <laughs> 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 Uh, you keep your ear to the ground, you know how most town fans are feeling, you get the general mood. Some people think that you're a little bit too honest at the last meeting. You mm -hmm. can't be honest, you've got those half a dozen, a dozen strap lines, honesty, integrity, attitude, spirit, etc, whatever they all are. Uh, that's the honesty bit. Um, on reflection, do you think you said a little bit too much about James Bond at the last meeting, or are you still happy with what you said? Well, maybe I should tweet him. Shall I tweet him now? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I can't do that. Uh, no, James Vaughan is, is the same. All along we've said what we said. You know? um, 
yeah, maybe I could have stayed and told him fibs and said, well, you can play for a contract, but he's been, that's what he's being told by the manager. Yeah. Um, so if I come out and say, you can play for a contract, but then the manager's told him, um, you're not getting one, then what do I say? I can tell the truth. Um, and with James Ball, you sit here now, he's got a tantrum, James, James is a good lad. Um, he's got a calf injury, so he can't play. It's as simple as that. If he wasn't injured, would he be up for selection? If up for selection is the, the correct terminology, would he be uh, on the piece of paper with all the players listed down? We need 18 for the first team match squad tonight. Um, would he be potentially in that 18? I would have thought so. Um, and it's like anything else, if, if his injury record was a lot better than it is, then maybe he wouldn't be in his last year of his contract here. That's life. Um, but James is James, you know, he, um, um, he's, he's, he's very injury prone, we all know that. Um, but when he's on the field and he's fit, he's dynamite. That's the balance. Um, we always knew when we signed him that if he was um, uh, fit all the time, then he wouldn't be signing for us field time, he'd be probably in the Premiership. That's, that's the level we take. Um, but maybe James, um, with his calf injury, um, he's had it for a long time now, but he's, he's seriously, he's definitely, um, he's got a tear. Um, and he's, he's come back to full fitness now, that's it, and he's started training on grass. So hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll push his way back in. And if James wants, which he knows this, um, his agent knows it, if James wants to uh, get a good contract next year, then he has to build a really good full time this year. As simple as that. How, how did the Wigan move fall through then? Because Wigan wants to pay us half his wages and didn't accept it. It's already been mentioned about the positive effect that South Town's been having. Uh, we've got three games coming up, one after the other, where all the away teams are bringing the amount of fans that's going to mean we're moving out of South Town. Yeah. As we've said, the positive effect that the fans are having on the team, the collective effort of those fans that they're bringing, is quite likely going to outsing the yeah. town fans, as yeah. much as we're going to try. <coughs> Do you foresee a time in the future when we're going to actually be able to occupy the South Town permanently and move opposition fans to an area where actually it, tactically, I suppose you could say, they're going to have less influence. Yeah. It's about the South Stand, it's about, we're going to have three games coming up. Uh, well, it won't be tonight and it won't be MK Dons, will it? But there'll be Derby. Yeah. Middlesbrough. Yeah, and that's the one. Derby, Middlesbrough, and the other one. Um, <laughs> uh, can you ever see a time where we won't have to relocate fans out of the South Stand? Um, because tactically, you've said it's great encouraging the lads, egging them on when things are tough. Yeah. It would be fantastic, wouldn't it, to see behind the goal fuller, relatively full. The big question, I suppose, Dean, is are we ever going to get to three or 4,000 people behind there? Because I suppose it would be economic suicide to give that stand up if we were only going to get 1,500 or 2,000 in. So, um, yeah, I think, I think the key is if, some, if, if in the way it wants to be 4,000, uh, we said they go behind the um, they go behind the south stand and we relocate back to wherever. If if we have a provision where someone wants to bring six thousand, then they can have the south stand and the bottom half of the corner bank. Yeah, and we've talked about that. Um, but maybe the next, if it's successful this season, maybe what we push next is um, away fans. If they bring less than two thousand, then their uh, their their home is at the um, south end of the Cullen Bank and we can then have the whole of the south stand. So probably that's the next move. Um, but let's see where we've gone this year. Now that person doesn't work very well actually. Um, but let's see where we go this year and uh, hope it continues in a, in, a, in, a, in a good time on it. The Bradford City model, price versus quality, full stadiums versus half full stadiums, extra revenue programs and shirts, etc. Very tough balancing act for anybody involved in football yeah. finances, Dean. <coughs> Interesting question, and I'm actually glad you brought it up, because I'm going to throw this back to you guys. Our crowds are going down. No surprise about it, our walk of the scene is going down. Because we've been playing football, we've won four in 24, um, and we've been playing dire football, okay? It hasn't been good. So, you're not going to pay £25 or 30 to watch that because, quite frankly, it didn't represent good value. But we're all, we've won two games, we're all buoyed up, what could happen, happy days. But where we are, the crowds are going down. So ultimately, you've got to manage your finances versus what's happening out there. And I sit there and I look at the empty seats and I think, all right, next season, there is increased money from the football league, yeah? So, um, we have got to make a choice, and I've sat down with Nigel, I'm going to work the sums out. 
do we give some of that football league money back to the fans to have um, discounted season tickets? But there'll be less to the playing squad. Yeah? So there's a balance. So really, would you guys rather have less invested in the first team playing squad or do you want cheaper tickets to get the ground full? What do we do? Well, 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 you've got a few seconds to think about it. Those who think the money should be spent on players, the squad, just raise your hand. Okay, those who think, those who think it should be tickets, cheaper tickets, and those who, those who are on the fence, not bothered either way, don't want to make a decision. There's not many of those, there's a few. I would say it was at least two to one, Dean, you saw the hands as well. Yeah. Two to one in favour of spending the money on the squad rather than tickets. And somebody from the back corner shouted, who's to say with cheaper tickets people would even turn up anyway. That's my guess to on it. It was about two to one, I would say. Yeah. I, think, I think fans would turn up because they did in 2008 Centenary. Um, they did turn up, although they were particularly cheap. But as a club, we can't continue having 500 less each each year coming because before we know it, um, when we played Bolton on Saturday, I think we had nine and a half thousand um, home fans in the stadium. That is too low. We cannot survive championship football. So what we've got to think to ourselves: Do we get more fans through the door? Do we have more money on catering? Do we have more money on shirts? Do we have more Golden Gamble tickets? Do we get this place fuller? And I think. Whether it's right or wrong, I think the, the club needs a bit of a shot in the arm. And we need to get the fans back. Because even myself, I have friends who don't come to the game because simply they cannot afford it. Yeah, and the town fans, and they're quite embarrassed to say that to me. They simply find football now too expensive. And there's lots of other things to do. So I think we've got to balance it. So maybe next year what we are looking at is not saying the whole of the football league money goes to the fans, but maybe we proportion part of it so we can spend on this squad and the wages, but every other club will be doing that because we're all getting this cash. Um, and we maybe give a little bit back to people to entice them, not match day tickets, on season tickets. And maybe we start to do this from January, so we start enticing people with the offer from January all the way through and let's see where we go. We're just thinking about it, but we need, we need to understand what, what, what's working and what's not. And the last question I've chosen from a social media site that's uh, well known around here because I liked it. <clears throat> and I'm quoting here completely. Dean, despite the setbacks, the criticism, and the lack of faith amongst some, no. are you still proud to be chairman of the greatest team in football the world has ever seen? <laughs> Absolutely, I think. As Mick Buxton said when he got promoted from the, the fourth division to the third and he sat in his office with his whiskey and said, all the fans of celebration is thinking to himself, now then Mick, I've made life really difficult for myself now, aren't I? And I knew when we got to the championship, and money is less influential, my kind of money, is less, is less influential to get, you up, to get you promoted, then I knew life would be very difficult. I don't shirk um, uh, Q&As, I don't shirk responsibilities, but we've got to do it in a sensible manner. And I've kept saying, you know, if we do it in the right way, then we might just, we might just get there. And, and we've seen two or three wins, but it can get there. So for me, I love this football club. I like everything about it. I think we've achieved a lot, but I think we've got challenges in front of We've got a diminishing fan base. I think we've turned with the football lots of fans off, and we need to re-engage them. And that's, I think, my biggest challenge. But yeah, absolutely, of course yeah. yeah. I think a lot more positivity, it's very easy, we had a couple of good wins, but Dean, it's another full house on a difficult time for people to get here, pre-match on an evening. Uh, everybody really values the time you give to this Q&A. So our chair, Dean Howland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please just remind me, it's not finished yet, whatever that means. So, Mr. Hoyle, sir, Chairman. No, no, to be honest, I think I think your support is, is invaluable and it's fantastic. And you see the same faces giving me a rollicking week in, week out. But, but your support is absolutely amazing. And sometimes there's not an awful lot I can give back, but 
There's always a lady down here called Sheila, and she always gives me a bit of stick. But you know, what a nice lady. I, I, Come here, Sheila. <laughs> What a fantastic supporter. When I were a fan and used to go to away games, she was always there with your friend, weren't you, yeah? Yeah, she's no longer with us. She's no longer with us. But this is what football's about. So tonight, you're going to be the first, the first person to wear that shirt to us.